I'm a physician in the Department of Environmental Health at Harvard School of Public Health, and my goal was to create a multimedia interactive case to simulate a more real-life experience for students that combined both the human and scientific elements. We chose the case of Ashland, a community that was exposed to dye chemicals for decades and had raised concerns about cancers, particularly arising in young adults who had played as children in what turned out later to be contaminated areas. I partnered with Amy Cohen, Director of Educational Research at Harvard School of Public Health, Jesse Chapins and Kara Oler, who were the co-founders of Zego, which was the open source interactive software that we used, and Dan Borelli, an Ashland resident who contributed his personal knowledge and materials from a historical project he was working on. The Hauser Grant facilitated our very exciting interdisciplinary collaboration. Here is a glimpse of some parts of our case. It starts in 1998 with a phone call from 25-year-old Kevin Kane just diagnosed with a rare form of lung cancer to Suzanne Condon of the Department of Public Health in Massachusetts stating that he thinks his cancer and those of his friends are due to past exposures to chemicals from the Nyanza site and he wants the state to investigate. And so we start here with a few clips that give the history of Ashland, the Nyanza chemical site, why it was there, how it dumped the chemicals into areas of the community and actually at the time uh, people didn't realize that this was a hazard. For 60 years starting in 1917 the town of Ashland was poisoned. Nyanza, a company that manufactured dyes and pigments on a 35 acre site here simply dumped its chemical waste into the ground. It was a time long before environmental regulations. Yes this was a time before environmental regulations and we hear more from a variety of the residents who talked about how they played in these areas not knowing that it could be a hazard. My white socks would always turn colors, mostly like a bluish or purplish or whatever. And my mother, back then it wasn't ever, she wasn't worried about anything medically or environmentally. She used to get pissed and that I was ruining my clothes. You know what I mean? She'd come out and say, you know, stop going in the water, you're wrecking your clothes, you're wrecking your clothes, so. We also provide the students with now an exposure map that they can interact with to be able to see where these exposures occurred, which will help prepare them in the future. So now we can have the students look at a map and interact with the map, clicking on different areas to see what kind of chemicals were there. And now that we know what the map looks like, going looking at residential areas and looking at the high school, understanding now that the high school that was built in 1965 now created an exposure pathway as the students went from the high school to the various ball fields. Two summers I played here, you're like, ah, oh, that was great. And then you think, wow, could something have ever have happened then? Or was it later? Or was it before? Or was it then? So to answer Kevin's questions and those of the community, students now review some of the past studies. They deal with the reality of doing a new study prompted by Kevin's call, consider the question whether they should even uh, do an expensive study given that the uh, site had already been remediated some years before, and then if they are going to go ahead with doing a study, how would they work with the community on the study design and subject recruitment? In the end, the Department of Public Health did do a study and they produced a lot of data, which the Amy then organized in a visual way located uh, on the map, which students can now explore. You'll see here this risk ratio exposure map where now students can click on an area such as this hill area where the students played a lot. You'll see that the red dots represent relative rates for cancer incidence and when it's over this line it shows that there's a higher incidence and you can also stratify this by a family history of cancer very easily and you can also easily go back to the main map. The students can explore this area and also see a composite map. In the end we ask the students now to come to their own conclusions concerning what the data shows and then what would they tell the community. We trialed this case for the first time in an introductory environmental health class in this last February. 21 students out of 33 responded to an online anonymous survey. 
Over 90 percent said that the material presented in the case was interesting, compelling, and relevant, and a valuable educational tool. Many strongly preferred to have more of these types of multimedia cases at Harvard School of Public Health. We also received other constructive feedback on how we can improve the case. We are planning to use this specific case in other classes and see great potential to future adaptations of the Ziga platform to create interesting interactive cases um, and case materials for classes as well as the potential for online education.